welcome to the EEPROM 9 and today's teardown item or overview as we often do of these old vintage calculators is of an Olympa International CD401 calculator from 1972 or at least that's when they were released to the public and you might recognise this if you uh, watch Tecmoan because it's the exact same type of Nixie calculator Tecmoan managed to get hold of a few years back. Well, I also managed to get hold of one through some miracle of just... It wasn't labelled as Nixie Tube, so therefore it ended up going for a sensible price and not like a bazillion quid. Another one I was watching, which was like a really big, like big all-transistor logic one, uh, did go for more crazy money. So this was released in uh, 1972 two and then continued on so same era as a lot like previous calculators like the Sinclair Cambridge I have and whatnot and also I apologize for this wire but that's how I'm uh, seeing what the camera sees so I can keep everything in frame yeah maybe I should have connected to another monitor but yeah so shall we pop him open and see what's inside because he is a very very fascinating machine and isn't a single chip calculator either, so even more interesting. So he takes a standard kettle lead to uh, power him, so any old uh, power lead will do. On the back we've got Power Switch, Olympia International, back when they were still doing their thing. You've got the tag, which is a lovely metal nameplate. This thing is built to a beautiful quality. Doesn't have floating point uh, calculations, so you only have prescribed decimal places where you set to two, three, three, rather than it setting automatically. Got memory functions, which is quite rare for a four function calculator of this age. Percent, a lot of the standard stuff doesn't have square root or anything like that. But who the hell uses um, square root on four function calculators? That's a scientific calculator thing. To get him open, there's only two screws to uh, depart. Which are in the back here. So yeah, I didn't win the other one because it, the transistor one, because it went for silly money. If I did get it, it would have had a retro road trip, but because it was uh, kind of above London in the uh, more arsehole place of the UK to get to. So it'd have been an interesting little road trip, it certainly would have been a few hours. <clears throat> so once we have this off, the front just lifts up. And this is made out of ABF plastic because it uh, clips. But not only do we have proper threaded screws that we can see here, but the clips that actually mount to the bottom, you can see they're actually made of metal. These aren't just plastic. They are metal moulded into the plastic. I mean, that's just the level of quality and detail you just don't see anymore. And it's a real shame. Now we can show you the guts more easily if we um, put them up on his side. We can see the Nixie tubes very much more clearly now. I've got to do this without electrocuting myself, but hey. So here we have the uh, Nixie tube. It has a 12-digit uh, display. As you can see, memory function is um done by that uh, incandescent bulb there, that looks like an incandescent bulb. There's an arrow and there's a negative, so we can set it to negative, or I don't know how to trigger the other thing, time, and we've got the arrow and the memory function to light, which is pretty cool. So we'll turn him off because we want to show you the um, rest of the internals and, well, we don't want to electrocute ourselves. Now, interestingly, under the uh, linear transformer, which you can see has a very interesting voltage selection system, as you can see, if we 
focus in on him. You can see this like has it all nicely on how you configure these three points up here. As you can see, mine is set for 240. And then we have what looks to be an really old school switch mode type power supply up the top that divides up all the voltages, even a little hybrid thing, so God help if this thing ever dies, because good luck getting hold of another one of those. The Nixie tubes are of course transistor driven, and they look to be a very similar type to what is in my um, Nixie watch. They look to be very similar to that. I don't know if they're the exact type. So if we depart the four screws from the keyboard, we get to see the real meat of the um, calculator, which I shall show you. Round and round and round he goes. Where will he stop? Nobody knows. Now one thing I love about the keypad on this is it doesn't have the problem of that TI calculator that I've done there, that uh, key repair video on. Because I've had to take that apart and do the key, uh, redo the keys, bend bits of metal, glue it all back together four times before I got it working. And could take it back to the office and set it up on my desk. This one uses reed switches with magnets. So when you push the keys down, a little magnet goes in front of a reed switch, which triggers it, which is an absolutely beautiful system that will um, lead to not having to uh, repair the key switches. All I need to do is um, retrobrite them. And that this thing will come completely apart for that um, purpose. I actually managed to get this one for the grand total of 25 quid, 30 if you include the postage, which is pretty damn good for an Institute calculator. So if we pop him up and we show you underneath, as you can see, we have read switches. Now I don't know if there's going to be enough resolution in this camera to show you the actual reed switches moving, so I'm just going to hit them and hope you you can actually see the flying details of them moving. You have to watch this in full HD of course, but you can hear them. But that's why this keyboard feels so good, it's weighted so nicely as well. And then, if we lift him up, we have the chipset, which consists of um, six ceramic integrated circuits which are all masha shitta which is a quite an entertaining name because it's got shit in it and um, now this is a full chipset because they're all mn50 51s but the bit that changes is 15a 14a 12a 122 or 22i 23i and 26i. And then the rest is basically all um, passives and then under the uh, display there, which I might be able to show you depending on the lighting, you might be able to see the transistor arrays that drive the display. Which I have not taken out. There you go, you can see the transistor arrays that drive the display. Now hopefully I can keep these alive because high voltage transistors which are from the 70s tend to be a little long in the tooth and tend to have a habit of um, dying. So I do want to keep the, an eye on the operational capacity of this thing. But that's basically an overview of the Olympa CD 401 or is it 410? No, it's 401. Which is a very nice 1972 calculator. There are no visible date codes I've seen yet, so I don't know the specific 
year this one was uh, manufactured, but I'd imagine it'd probably be around the time from when it came out. But yeah, these are pretty hard to get, these Nixie Tube calculators, but I'm glad to finally have one. That's another electronic item off the bucket list. Also, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, and good luck in your own searches for Nixie Tube calculators. I'm going to put him back together now and we will need to fully restore and clean the case but that's another thing for another day and yeah he all works which is brilliant thanks for watching